listening to Life Angels with Tracy Lynn, right here on LA Talk Radio. Good evening, everyone. Welcome here to Life Angels here on LA Talk Radio. We've got a full house tonight. Guess who? Look who's here, you guys. I know everyone's been very excited. We got a lot of action on Facebook today and social media. We have two celebrities in the house. We have Mr. Mike Glass. I'd like to welcome you to the show tonight. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thank you so much for being here. I was very excited to have you on the show. And we have Hella Trevino. Welcome. You, it's thank an you honor. very much. Did she get that right? <laughs> yes. yes, she did. I practiced a Actually, little. Yes, okay. she did. All right. <laughs> thank you very much. And Mr. Dan Kennedy, celebrity photographer in the house once again. So I want to welcome you guys to the show. This is going to be a great show tonight. Legends of bodybuilding. I know this is uh, obviously a big passion of mine, and I know a lot of people have so many questions out there on bodybuilding and fitness and health. Well, these are two experts that can definitely answer these questions for you. So I want you guys to call in. I hope you're going to call in tonight. All the numbers are listed up on the Facebook there, too. So call in now. All right. So we're going to start off with Mr. Mike Glass. Welcome to the show. Mm. Thank so you, Tracy. It's a pleasure to be here with uh, all these celebrities here tonight. I know. <laughs> we were just, you should have seen us. Well, you guys will see the pictures later, but we were actually just doing a flex off in the back. <laughs> I lost. <laughs> I'm no, not going to lie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I lost, but that's okay. Yeah, so you're in good condition, though. You're <laughs> competing soon, so yeah, show thank up, you. Show me oh, right impressive. now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because I'm looking at her and it's going, oh, wow, mm -hmm. you know, I love that fullness. This, this, is, this is contest shape and this is off-season shape. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that off-season look, too, because I love the fullness. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's rather than that kind of depleted, yeah. you know. There's you a little bit more fluff. <laughs> yeah, I like the fluff. It's yeah. good. <laughs> okay, back to Mike. <laughs> All right. So, Mike, you know, you've been doing this, you've been in the industry for a long time now. So Two years, yeah. Tell us how it started for you. Well, I was the uh, quintessential kid that got the sand kicked in his face and... Mm -hmm got tired of it, and I started working out. Uh, I read the magazines, Charles Atlas, yeah, uh, John Gremick, Bill Pearl, of course, Steve Reeves from mm -hmm. the Hercules movies. And that's what got me started. I just started working out at 13 because my father passed away of a massive heart attack. Oh, and I said, mm, I don't want to be like that. So mm -hmm. I started working out at 13. At 14, I got a little stronger did my thing. I was part of the JFK, John F. Kennedy's Council on Physical Fitness okay. during the 60s, the height of the Vietnam War, so I worked out. I uh, eventually wound up at a place called Gold's Gym in Venice. Yay. Sounds familiar. And uh, who did I bump into <laughs> yeah. but the legends. This was the first one on Pacific Avenue, mm -hmm. and I bumped into Arnold. Frank Zane, yeah, and my all-time idol was Dave Draper, who was the blonde giant uh, at that time. Oh, okay. and uh, yeah. I could commu uh, communicate because I had a long ponytail, and <laughs> I saw the pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a fun time, and I uh, learned a lot from everybody there. In fact, I had the opportunity to meet Joe Gold, the original Gold's owner. Ooh, okay. And believe it or not, compared to today's society, mm -hmm. his office was the gym floor, his desk was a card table, <laughs> and his, de his, his uh, chairs were little folding chairs. Okay. He said, hey, kid, are you interested in working out here? He said, yeah, I sure am. I see all my legends here. And I was just in awe. My mouth was on the ground when I saw Arnold and all the legends. So yeah. he said, come on in and try it out for a week. There was sand all over the floor. Arnold came in wearing flip-flops and shorts. <laughs> and that's where it all started <laughs> for me. That's so awesome. That was it. And there was nothing fancy about Gold's Gym. It was A plus B equals yeah. C. Could you understand him when you first met him or saw, talked to him? <clears throat> uh, vaguely. <laughs> Yeah. Vaguely, and I started working out over there, uh, but I mainly communicated with Zane because Zane was the quintessential perfect bodybuilder. He was from head to yeah. toe. He was what we call anatomically correct. Yeah, he had absolutely. everything in the right proportion, the right shape, and I knew I couldn't compete on an Arnold scale. I couldn't build my body. Dave was too big, but Frank mm -hmm. was right along the same structure of an ectomorph which i yes. was an ectomorph small bone 
Yeah. So that's what started it for me, Tracy. That's incredible. Yeah. I, I can imagine how starstruck. I mean, that just that experience kind of happened for me just a few years ago after moving here from Canada. And I walk in there and see Lou Frigno and Arnold and everyone. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, Mike O'Hearn and everybody, all the mentors exactly. that I had been looking yeah. up to for so many years. And I mean, it was just incredible because, as you said, like, you know, I was looking at all the magazines and exactly. and it was like, this is the, this is really happening now. And so, I mean, those guys it's are in there. Amazing their, time. Put, yeah. And they're putting in the work and it's not just all, you know, that's what I really love about Gold's Venice is that yes. when everyone's in there, they're putting in the work. It's it's a job. You're in there to do a job <coughs> and it's not, you know, social hour and things like that. People are training really, really hard and they take the sport very seriously. Well, I know I do, and I know, you know, yourself, too. I still do. And yeah. Absolutely, yeah, you I do. I think that's yes. what gives Gold's Gym that, like, unique atmosphere. Because absolutely. It's, it's very unique. If you go to yeah. any other gym, it doesn't have that vibe. Like, yeah. you, you go in there, and immediately there's yeah. a vibe. Yeah. Like, everybody's really, like, right. killing yeah. it. They're you feel the, you feel the energy hard. in there. Yeah. There's a legend, and no matter if it was in... in 1970 or if it's today yeah. th it's the same atmosphere yeah. it might yeah, be a little bit better. more fancy today and more machines right. but yeah. it's still you know the legends of yeah. today old school not right even I actually not even the legends of today because I just saw Arnold mm -hmm. Schwarzenegger train there the other morning yeah and yeah, you know Lou comes ago. in once in a while still so it's it's a mix now of like the old legend and the new legends and I yeah. think it's just it's it's amazing I love it. I mean, just, yeah, my workouts are so much better in there. Is that where you train all the time, too? Yep, every day. So <laughs> she walks there. <laughs> you you go to another gym, and it's like, it's just yeah. kind of dull. It's hardcore all the on, way. On, on, yeah. on, their, on the machines with, <clears throat> their, with their cell phones. Yeah. And Texting and yeah, you kind of feel like the whole you energy stand is out just too. like Ooh. yeah it just does yeah <laughs> it's like being in a motivational video when you walk into gold so that's I, I like to me. high vibration you yeah, know? yeah. I love it it's intensity well you're a champion so hella welcome to the show let's talk Thank about you, you. Uh, you look phenomenal. Thank you. You do. Absolutely. I mean, that is so much work. And I just, you know, you look so happy, too. That's the thing that I really like about you. You just exude this, like, energy from you. You know, you love what you do. And that's so incredible. I love what I do. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I have no reason not to be happy because yeah. I'm living my dream. Mm, I, I remember it. when I was 17 years old and I started in this small little powerlifting gym yeah. uh family owned you know and and they had all and where was that that was in denmark okay good that's so that's where you're that, from that's where i'm originally okay. from um denmark scandinavia and they had all the flex magazines and muscle yeah. fitness and all that and i would look at the pros and i'll be like i remember i saw kim shusevsky which has been one of like uh -huh. the girls that i look up to yes. linda murray also and i would just look at her and think wow if i could just look yeah. And now I do. Yeah. And, I'm and now you're bigger than her. <laughs> I know. He and knows. Just, <laughs> and now I'm competing this. at the same yeah. competitions that she usually did. And, and, and I achieved it. I mean, one thing is to yeah. be 17 year old and, and say, I want to do that. Yeah. I say, I want to be a pro. Yeah. I want to move to the United States one day. Yeah. And, and I did that. And this is what I'm living right yeah. now. And that I can go to work at goals and <laughs> compete and Beautiful. make money uh, uh, and doing what I love. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, I'm like so blessed. So yes. I'm just smiling all day. I love <laughs> it. And share with the, the audience, the viewers and the listeners and tell them, I mean, because th a dream come true doesn't happen for a lot of people. This is living out your absolute fantasy. So how did you get to that place? What were the steps that it took? I mean, I know that's a lot of hard work, but what were the sacrifices? What were the steps that got you from Denmark out here living this life now and living in that pro lifestyle? I think the number one key to getting in whatever you want to achieve in life mm -hmm. is persistency. Yes, good. And Love it. belief. Yes. Um, I just kept going. I just I yeah. kept going to the gym every day. I kept yeah. taking small steps. You don't get pro ov overnight, obviously. Mm -hmm. You you gotta set smaller goals. So I yeah. was like, okay. I want to win the Danish nationals and yeah. and I prepare for that some years and and try to build that body that it took yeah. and looked at you know the other girls went to the competitions not competing just look have a look 
how do they look like yeah try to talk to some people that were into the business how do you do it like can you help me with some diet or some tips and yeah, just that's important you that's know it's, it's good to have some people like if you want to do something you want to surround yourself with people that are already doing it and knows what they're doing yes. you know you don't want to ask you know oh how do i do this exercise and ask somebody who never competed or who yeah. never um had some type of education in it or mm -hmm. something like you want to ask somebody experienced yeah. how do i do this so i had like i was very fortunate that some of like the top danish bodybuilders at that time okay. that they took me under their wing and was like okay you know i'll look at you uh how yeah. your progress is coming along you know i'll help you with the diet you know i train with all the guys <laughs> yeah i i'm yeah. like i'm the same too People that was always so like what do you train with guys I, you know i started already in the early 90s yeah i started before the first figure competition came out when was the first figure competition we were just we created it ourselves when was that what year it was, that? was uh, here's the story tracy and so thank you for creating it because i love yeah it. well it's <laughs> a true story it's yeah. a lot of people don't know this but i was the first one to ever create woman's figure model quest and men's physique mm -hmm. i went to joe weeder right into his office in woodland hills and i says joe women's bodybuilding is getting too extreme mm. and he says i know what do you want to do about it mm -hmm. and i said we need to change it because the sponsors are not sponsoring the women bodybuilders mm -hmm. i like women bodybuilding a lot of people do but the sponsors didn't like it because it wasn't mainstream yeah sexy so enough. Yeah. What we did, I says, Joe, let's do what Bob Guccione did with Penthouse. Let's do what Hef did with Playboy. Let's have the weeder girl and the weeder guy. And he says, I like it. Let's do it. So we did it. Joe gave me $150,000 of marketing money in Flex wow. Magazine, Muscle and Fitness, Muscle and Fitness Hers, and what's the other one? Flex. Thank you. I said flex, but we'll say it twice. Flex, flex. <laughs> oh, anyway, mm -hmm. in six months, Tracy, Helen, Dan, we had 175 girls show up for the first ever wow. Joe Weider model figure quest. We had 35 nice. guys. They were wrapped around the Mandalay Bay. Mm -hmm. And we called it the Joe Weeder Model and Figure Quest. Mm -hmm. After the show, Ben Weeder, who was Joe Weeder's brother, yeah. thanked me. Joe Weeder says, we're going to implement it now into the sport. I love it. Thank you very much. Now, goodbye. I couldn't copyright a man's name. And the NPC ran with it. It took him five to ten years to pick it up, mm -hmm. as it did with men's physique. But it yeah. finally caught on. Okay. And so we did it there at Mandalay Bay at 2000, yeah. and it was very started. That's where it started, Tracy. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Thank, I love that thank story. Thank you for that. I know. Thank you're, you. You're welcome. Because you've created an incredible sport, and I absolutely love it. And our I know numbers, so many people appreciate you for Our that. numbers still go unchallenged as far as North American, yeah. women's nationals. We started a show back in the – I'm just giving you a quick scenario of what we've done. Yeah. Back in the uh, 70s, there were no uh, really bodybuilding shows. They just called mm -hmm. him a Mr. This or a Mr. Orange County or a Miss Orange County. Yeah. And I said to my buddy, I said, why don't we do something like they do in the racing classics, the golfing classics? Let's have a muscle classic. So we did, and we put in 1,000 people into Anaheim High School. We had Frank Zane, the current Mr. Olympia guest post. We filled up every seat. Wow. I think we got something here. So yeah. years later, we kept doing it and doing it, doing it. In 85, we tied the Olympia record with 5,000 people. I read that. Congratulations. It's a true story. Yeah, wow. that's It's phenomenal. a true story. So Good for you. We spent as much on our poster as most of the athletes, most of the sponsors and uh, other promoters spent on their whole show yeah so we put out a lot of money but we got a lot of money back yeah that's what was the golden age of bodybuilding and what where did it how did it start for you i mean this is obviously a passion of yours to promote and host these shows and well create uh, such a huge yeah huge i turnout. was I, I wanted to try my uh put my 
car on the track like everybody else. Uh-huh. So I entered a couple shows and didn't even place. Okay. I met Dave Draper, and he said, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And, of course, I went down to San Diego, won my first show in 1971, the Mr. Pacific Southwest and Most Muscular Man. I was I thrilled. Love it. But I thought, you know, I work out so hard, and they give you a trophy the size yeah. of this water bottle here, yeah. which is nothing. And I thought, you know what, I think I'm going to try to run my own show. Yeah. So we did, and we did it in a gym. The first gym show, we had 50 people. The next year, we had Pete Grimkowski guest pose. We had 100 people. Yeah. So then we said, we think we got something here. So that started our muscle classic. I did all the other shows. I got the bid on the North American. Yeah. We took it from Vegas, where they were doing 500 people. We took it into Redondo Beach and put in 1,500, and the rest is history. We really Incredible. did it. Our, sh- our records go unchallenged. Mm-hmm. Did yeah. you make sure the trophies got bigger? The trophies <laughs> got... Yes, Hel- they're, they're getting... Now he's the man we got to talk to. Hel- exactly. You're a big, you're a big girl, but we had trophies bigger than you, honey. Oh, wow. They were, do- oh, <laughs> they were seven feet tall. Good job. Some of them. Oh, in wow. fact, one of the guys that won from Texas says... I want to thank you for this trophy, but I had to pay a second fee to put it on the plane. <laughs> yeah. So it was oh, it was a golden not a time. Bad to have, yeah. It was a golden time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I had a good ride, so I don't need to prove myself. However, I do have a couple irons in the fire, which I'll tell you about during the broadcast here. Yes. So. Good. Uh, and I mean, you are in such fantastic shape. Look at. I mean, you have impressive. such size Look too. Look at those guns. I know his guns. <laughs> we took pictures. He, was, he wasn't a, even. He didn't listen, even flinch. I'm like, a nobody in the middle of nowhere, Tracy. Uh, that's that's my motto. You be humble and you get more. Yeah. You be boastful and you lose everything. Yeah, it's true. Remember that, you guys, because yeah. you know we've been in certain situations in our lives where we've been humble. And, uh, you know, I remember one of my national shows and, you know, I thought I was winning this show. I deserved it. You know, I I don't even know what I was thinking. I just and I got humbled really quick. Yeah. And uh, I remember standing there going, you know what? You needed this. This is exactly what you needed. You know what? And I walked off that stage and I shook every girl's hand. And then I was yeah. like, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to hug them. Yeah. And I was like, good for you. Congratulations. And I remember walking out of the out of the auditorium and I cried. And it wasn't like I was crying for the loss. I was crying for the lesson that I learned. Yes. Because I really felt it in my heart. And I really, I just, it was a really good experience. I knew that it was like one of those you know, game changers for me. And so now when I go into competing, it's like, you know, you don't go in there thinking that you're better than anybody else because we all work just as hard and uh, you have to show your respect to the other competitors and other athletes. Life is filled with dead end roads, Mm -hmm. potholes, stop signs. (laughs) But where do you learn the most? Not on the peak, on the valley. You learn more on the bottom. You betcha. I always say that you're your own um, competition. Yes. You know, it's yeah. like, don't mind the others because yeah. you're not in control of what the other athletes do. Yeah. You are only in control of what you do. Exactly. And that's what you got to focus on. Yeah. Once you, you lose the side of yourself. Yeah. That's when it starts going wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, it does. Yeah. It, once you get up in the head, yeah. you know, and you yeah. start overthinking yeah. things. Yes. Yeah. 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 Stop talking to the other girls yeah. and the Instagram and Facebook, how they look like. Yeah. That, that's the way to help. Hey, I'm curious you about something, Helen. You mentioned something so. earlier about the ranking, and you said you were ranked number three in the world or number two. two. Number two. Oh, two. Oh, I, I'm, not sure, on. I'm not sure about that. Oh, what, what is the ranking? Who decides who, what, what you are? I mean, yeah, that's, tell us about that. Uh, well, I, I measure it out of like which is the biggest competition in the world. The biggest uh, competition in the world for pros, um, it was for female bodybuilding, it was formerly called the Miss Olympia. Mm-hmm. That was like the, 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 the top. The pinnacle, the top. Yeah, exactly. Like a world championship. And to get there, you also have to go through a number of qualifiers. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Either you have to win a qualifying competition or you have to collect points. Mm-hmm. And I believe it's like the top five uh, that get, they get points at every yes. competition. So say if you got like fifth place and you get one point, you can say, okay, I wanna go to the next qualifier, maybe I get second place and I get five points. Yeah. So that way you can also qualify. So I think it's the top seven girls or something at the end of the year uh, that have the most points, they will also qualify. 
Now um, there's been some changes. A new promoter took over the Miss Olympia for female bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's called Wings of Strength. It's Jake and Crystal Wood that has taken us over and uh, treated us very well. Uh, the new uh, Miss Olympia is called the Rising Phoenix World Championships. Yeah, I read that. Um, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, so and it's amazing because they're really the show was it was the first show this year ever, okay. and wow. that was everything. I mean, there was like great mm-hmm. venue, mm-hmm. great like expensive hotel. Is that, is that, <laughs> the, one, that the one in room. Texas? Uh, sa- yeah, San oh, Antonio. It was in Texas. Yes, okay. San Antonio, okay. Texas, and just backstage like. Everything was so like, you know, organized. The expediter was like all expediter was there all the time, telling you when you get on. Like now is it an hour? That's now you super have thirty important. minutes. Now you have fifteen minutes. It was well organized. You, it wow, was I so like organized, and also the prize money, which is also, you know, we gotta live. Usually, I believe the Miss Olympia first place was twenty thousand. Mm. This year, uh, Wings of Strength knocked that up to fifty thousand. Wow. Plus a sixty-five thousand dollar Jeep. Wow! wow. Now Let's we're talking. So Damn, I won for second business. place. I won uh, twenty-five thousand. So now we are talking about we can make a living because Great. take that. That's nice. Sure. Good job, you guys. Yeah. You know, Good. take that and some sponsorships, yeah. and you do some personal training, uh-huh. some guest posing. Yeah. Then we have a better nice living, living, and we have a yeah. better chance. Yeah. I'm glad that you mentioned that too, because I have a lot of people that ask me all the time, "What do you do this for?" And is we mentioned the trophies too. It's like. Why would you put yourself through that for a little trophy or not even getting a trophy? You know, and it's it's self satisfaction more than anything. But you know, people always ask, do you get paid money at least? So it's nice to hear on a pro level that you know competitors and athletes are getting paid yeah. money. Yeah. So you guys that have asked me that over and over and over, um, you know, when I get to Hella's <laughs> level, <laughs> you know, yes, you are making money, and because uh, you, you have to make a living, because this yeah. is. A full-time career for you yeah. it's just it's it's a lot you put into it and it just it it takes a huge amount of time yeah uh, when I'm in prep and I mean I'm fortunate that I don't have to have a nine to four job so yeah. I just I'm in the gym maybe like five hours a day yeah yeah um, I can relate know, yeah, maybe more, <laughs> you know, then so in posing <laughs> yeah. practice, I just, uh, you know, I got to practice my routine. Yeah, just it takes time so to prepare seven meals sure, a day. Give her, give her some tips. She full, needs some tips. Full time sure. job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. It is a full time job. Yeah, it, it is a full time job. Just, just preparing <laughs> your meals, you know, preparing it your meals, posing, you're in there training, doing your cardio. Yeah, I mean, just it's I mean, my day is like. You know, I get up in the morning, I do an hour cardio, I go home, prepare my breakfast, then I'll cook my meals, maybe I have like 10 chicken breasts I wanna throw on a grill and and cook up some rice or potatoes or whatever. Then uh, I Is that one day's meal? (laughs) Uh, is that one meal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, is that your I, I, it's maybe not the 10 chicken breasts. You just lost your audience. It's, it's, it's maybe for they're a couple like, days. Can I come to for dinner sometime? <laughs> yes. Exactly. They're like, uh, that's Thanksgiving like, like, tomorrow. That's like $100 a day <laughs> yeah. for breakfast. Maybe not that much, but okay. I like to cook for a couple of days. We, <laughs> yeah. we, we invite us. Be, we'll come over. You guys, yeah. Invite us. I can eat it is. I mean, I have in my diet, I have four different protein types. I actually have five. Okay, so I gotta they? I gotta cook fish every day. Yeah. I have salmon when I'm a little bit out. Yeah. When I get closer to the competition, it switches to tilapia. Okay. Then I have uh, chicken or turkey. Yeah. Year round. Then I have uh, usually one steak a day. Mm-hmm. Then I have egg whites yep. morning and evening. Yeah. And then I have protein shake after the training. So that's five wow. different types, and you gotta prepare all that. Oh yeah, it's a yeah. full time so job. It's a- and I have different types of of uh, carbs also because when you get to a higher level it's like you yeah. you gotta see okay mm. these carbs like brown rice they're slow i'll take them at these times where i don't do so much yeah maybe you'll take like a faster carb like white rice or some potatoes at some other time yeah. you know you it's just uh mm-hmm. it's the diet can be a little bit scientific but it's yeah. also you know big achievements we're talking about Any uh, recommendations for people or just words of wisdom to let people know that are wanting to compete? Because what I hear all the time is, I can't do the diet. There's no way. I mean, I hear that all the time from my clients, competitors, and people like that. Is there anything that you can give to them just to 
kind of you know give them that extra encouragement just to say you know what you can do this and it, and teach them the way of the different lifestyle i'll say usually people that say i can't do the diet yes either it's because they've never really made a try yeah if they made if they made a try it yeah. was a half-hearted try yeah, or they took the diet somewhere off online or whatever yeah i'd say if you want to do it then you if, if this is really what you want to do if yeah. you really want to do it it's all about how much do you want it i know it's yeah. a little bit cliche but it is no nope. if you want to do it you will also go that route and yeah. one advice is get a coach yeah you know get absolutely. someone if if you're not knowledgeable you can't don't just do like a gym body that makes you a diet and you're not sure i mean yeah if he's a pro if he's knowledgeable yeah. you know he has a bachelor in nutrition go for it but other than that you know get a coach get professional yeah. um advice because you need a second set of eyes as yeah well because too. if you go half-hearted again it will yeah. fail again and you lose faith and you'll never do it again. Hey Mike, yeah. she's she's doing something what's happening now. When you were training back in the seventies, was the diet consistent or people cheated with steroids and all that stuff? Or? Uh well, we nobody ever used steroids, you know that. Not even Arnold. Yeah. So <laughs> no. uh, we better <laughs> come on. Well, I'm curious about that. No, well, here here it is. It's just like any other thing. We didn't have the sophisticated uh, what's the word pharmaceutical products okay. that they have today and mm -hmm. vitamins you got to understand Van, uh, dan back then there was only two or three vi uh, protein companies around rio h blair mm -hmm. and hoffman supplements that was it across the board mm -hmm. then eventually weeder came into the picture then other companies now there are thousands and thousands yeah. of that multi-million yeah. dollar industry called modern day bodybuilding and nutrition yeah so Yes, we did. We had to uh, diet, but we diet very dumb. We went off. Z we went on zero carbs for a week, and then we loaded up on the weekend. Then we went off zero carbs. Mm -hmm. We were so in shock by the time we hit that stage to compete. Yeah. We didn't know if we were coming and going. And mind you, this was before a lot of the steroids, uh, HGH. A lot of this stuff that came over the board and were people using them i think they were yeah because yeah. i know the people that i beat in some of the shows went on to win mr america and i disappeared and i mm -hmm. produced shows and it was it was better it was harder to compete than it was to run shows because you have to do that year round of course and uh, you get blown out of the saddle and you're discouraged and so on and so forth yeah. uh steroids have been around forever yeah, I want to talk. Who wants to talk about human growth hormone? Because I mean, that's a big thing, and not a lot of people know about it. Um, I mean, I was a little bit naive because in Canada it's not as big as and prominent as it is out here in the United States. But uh, women using it, men using it. Um, right. What are your thoughts on it? What do you guys know about it? What can we share with the listeners? Because I want to just kind of dive into things that people don't normally talk about. Sure. So uh, I feel like it's it's almost like it, it's become like the new anti-aging drug. Okay. Because you see all these clinics where you can go and you get like yeah. you know hgh therapy testosterone therapy if you're over 40 and so forth yeah. uh it makes you look younger mm -hmm. um so it's it's become more spread out of course um it's in bodybuilding and and also you know figure and fitness yeah. but but right. also just regular people have started using it a yeah. lot as an anti-aging we actually we know that actors have been using it for many years yeah. to just right. look better and younger and yeah healthier. absolutely a lot of my clients i mean i train uh you know all different types of people and celebrities and actors and things like that and uh you know a lot of people have a lot of information on it and yeah, they're quite there. interested in it so it's there. uh you know and there are the uh, harmful things also too you got to make sure that your people are tested because it mm -hmm. can cause the growth of cancer is that correct yes so if the cancer is in your body it can it can flare up okay. uh tracy i know a couple of people that are on a clinical trials for hgh okay they get tested once a month and they go out five vials of blood yep. they check to make sure your uh your blood is not too high in red blood red blood cells okay and your gh according to your bone structure are you an ectomorph endomorph or yeah. a mesomorph 
and how much testosterone do you have in your body for the guys i'm mm -hmm. going to be 70 next year come on yeah. you know the testosterone is pretty well gone south mm -hmm. so testosterone has been around it's yeah. an anti-aging drug yeah. uh hgh is a wonder drug mm -hmm. if it's used properly now some of the guys on stage don't use it properly and they go yeah. overboard and this is when arnold came up and mentioned mm -hmm. we got to turn back the clock some of the bodybuilders are getting too extreme yeah. what do you think hella yeah i think um <laughs> everything that's used excessively is not good you, right. we can say aspirin yeah. Water, yeah. food, cupcakes, <laughs> you know, what, cupcakes. whatever. Alcohol, yeah. <laughs> she said the C word today. <laughs> uh, Hello, uh, that's me. Oh my <laughs> God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know you're not. <laughs> sorry, I'm dreaming about Torture. cupcakes and chocolate. <laughs> no, I think everything in moderation. Yeah. Things can be used and they can mis be misused. I also sure. don't think it's unhealthy to smoke one cigarette once in a while, yeah. but if you smoke, 40 cigarettes every day, yep. you're dead sure if there's sure. something going to happen to you. Yeah, no, I agree, too. So uh, that's kind of my philosophy. What do you guys think? I wanted to, to do a myth buster right now. Is the GH belly, okay, because I hear this all the time. Is that real? Is that is that growth hormone belly? Is that why it's distended like that? Is Do you know? Because I, everybody he, says... Uh, well, my brother has it for too much beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is the real deal. When it Arnold is. said to the president of the NPC, Jim Mannion, he said, you gotta get your judges in line and to dial it back a little bit. He meant it okay. because the sport is lost its symmetry, lost its poise, it's lost its luster because mm -hmm. of the big bellies. It's a real deal yeah. and it's uh, devastating, especially if I got a 19 year old son and son, I started all yeah. over again at 50. And I would never tell him to be a bodybuilder because the bodybuilders, the way they are today, are over the top. Yeah. They're over the top. And unless we dial it back, mm -hmm. you got problems well, we, brewing. we do have um, men's physique now and, and uh, the and coming the year, that's going to be the new... Uh, classic category. Classic, classic so physique. Okay. And you know? what exactly is that? So it's a, we're a smaller version of men's physique? Is that what it's going to be? Or is no, it No, classic of physique is going to be a smaller version of bodybuilding. Okay. A smaller okay. version of bodybuilding. The and they're okay. going to have, uh, you know, the shapes, like classic bodybuilding. Because the men's physique the guys, are, they're, they're, they're pretty jacked. They're big. And so they're and they're we're, we're, that's an interesting category. I'm ex well, kind of interested Arnold used to one that. name, two names, actually, that, that is a good representation of classic. Steve Reeves from the Hercules movies. Yeah. I don't mean George Reeves. I don't mean Christopher Reeves, mm -hmm. Superman. Yeah. Steve Reeves was the original Hercules. Yeah. And he looked magnificent. Mm -hmm. But he, did he take any drugs? I don't think he took anything, but he had the genetic code. He had 19-inch yeah. neck, 19-inch arms, 19-inch calves, and I think a 28-inch waist. Wow. Today, the waists are so big on the guys. Mm -hmm. He also mentioned Frank Zane. Now, Frank Zane was the guy that I idolized because mm -hmm. he was mainstream. Yeah. When the people get too muscular, too big, you're no longer part of mainstream. You're in a little sect of America yes. that nobody recognizes. You bet. Really good point, Mike. Yeah. Really good point. That's so true. You know, one of the uh, the bodies that I always kind of, you know, he was a mentor to watching. As, well, and he also, you know, he looks good. He works out hard and uh, is Mike O'Hearn. And he's actually going to oh. be on the show next he's week. So best. I just want to let everyone know. Oh so that's uh, our guest for next week. So I'm super excited and honored to have him here. You know, as we watch everybody as we're younger, too, I remember being the same way, too. I used to look through magazines and going, I want to look like Monica Brandt. And, mm -hmm. and I just, I never, ever thought I could do it. And so, you know, I want to just, I want you, Hella, to share with our listeners and viewers, and Mike, you as well, yeah. how to, you know, kind of give, like, our passion and how to inspire people to really do this, whether it's modeling or fitness competing or whether it's just you know, getting your body to that place that you just always wanted to get it to. What is what is the key? I mean, consistency is great as well because that's super important. I just want to know, like, the mental part of it and the heart. You know, when it comes to the heart and you think, wow, you know, I just, there was a point in my life where, you know, I never thought I could do it. We also, you had injuries as well. And getting through those injuries, how do you talk yourself to the next level? 
you got to just, you got to believe in yourself. Yeah. No matter what. You, that you, faith, you right? got You got to have faith yeah. in yourself. Yes. You got to love yourself. Yes. yes thank you. Know, you you, you got to love yourself so much that you believe that you deserve this. Oh, you deserve that. to achieve that goal that, that you set your eyes on. Mm. And a lot of times people don't, achieve it because of insecurities yep and doubt um and it's i don't have the surefire recipe it's it's something you got to find in yourself yep. and you know if you don't love yourself you know start reading some um self-development books affirmations uh, positive Perfect. affirmations, positive yes. affirmations. Absolutely. start thinking more positively yeah. i, I if I get like a negative thought, like, oh, I can't do that, mm -hmm. or I look like shit, or maybe I don't got it, or whatever yeah. it, whatever it may it happens, be, we goes all have that self-talk, yeah. and we have the negative self-talk, right. and we have the positive self-talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whenever I get that negative that comes in, because if you, you got to see it as something like like a demon that wants to consume you, because yeah. once you your get shoulder, yeah, yeah, once yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. get yeah. one negative thought. You get into that Spirals. mood, and it's like you're in like some kind of negative frequency. Yeah. And the longer you're in that negative frequency, the harder it is to break out. Yeah, I totally so exactly. agree. That's every time I get like a negative thought, I immediately say, you know, fuck that hill. I'm sorry. I know you don't, can't say that already. Uh, <laughs> That's all right. Bleep, bleep, <laughs> bleep, 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 but we're good. Bleep, Dan, we're just bleep, yeah. but you know, I, I'm just going to treat it like a cockroach, you know? Yep. I, I'm just like, I'm going to switch that. Yeah. Stop yeah. it. I'm like, stop it, Hillary, you know? Stop it. Good. And I'm replacing that bad thought with a positive thought. I love it. That's, That's so, it. so important. This that is, is because this is such a mental sport yeah a and i'll say anything you want to achieve in life whether it's start up that business or yeah. or you want to exactly. take that education yeah. if you have some barriers it, it can be very very hard you mm -hmm. got to have confidence to achieve yeah and that confidence Every moment it starts yeah. with yourself loving yourself believing that you can do it Exactly. I love it. That's so, so important. So, and that, and you. beyond that, Give me chills when you you've got to, <laughs> we all paint ourselves into our own corner, folks. Mm -hmm. Everybody does. That has ever walked. You see out here, we're in Hollywood. The streets are filled with people yes. that lost hope. You can never lose hope in yourself. You painted yourself into that corner. Mm -hmm. Hey, guess what, buddy? Guess what, ma'am? Paint yourself out. Yeah. Yeah. Only you can do that. Lily Townland. The uh, comedian said, we're all in this together, alone. Yeah. We come into this world alone, we die alone. Yeah. So you've got to make the most of it right now. And believe me, you have demons that you cannot believe. Mm -hmm. So your best friends have got to be those that lift you up, that are positive. If you have any negative, adios, amigo. Goodbye, that, Arriba that's Dutchie. Yeah. That's 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 you have purpose. to associate so with positive you, people. Good friends positive. around you. Yeah. Good friends yeah. around you. Yeah. People that are like-minded and bring you up and lift you up, and you're at that, yeah. like you said, that same, that vibration, yeah. that higher vibration. Higher vibrating people stick together, yeah. and they, they do well. And, you know, you, you nailed it on the head, too, Mike, yeah. yes. saying it's the hope because last uh, weekend, this just this past weekend, I was doing a charity drive in Skid Row, handing mm -hmm. out socks and water. It's mm -hmm. called Rock and Socks, so thank you to <laughs> my it. friends for doing that. Um, it's the most amazing experience you could ever you know For feel sure. and i just i have so much appreciation but just going down there and just looking into the eyes of people that you know don't have homes and they they're living on it. the streets yeah. and i asked them this one question why like why are you here yeah. and they all it, what it comes down to is loss of hope exactly. and lo no faith you know and just giving up you know so it's always that you know loving yourself enough to say that i do deserve this and i love that yeah uh, one of the greatest tools that i've learned over the years and also to my friend roseanne kelly i'd like to give her a shout out she does hypnotherapy on me i always thought it was kind of weird and it was like voodoo or something like that but it has helped me so much to achieve a lot of goals that i've been doing and uh, what she gets me to do is visualize. So I visualize already winning. I visualize succeeding. I visualize having a successful radio show at night. Right. I visualize you know, my business meetings, my contracts, everything that I do, I always visualize the success of it before I go into it. 
and if you see yourself as a winner, you are, you will be a winner. And I, I do that with all my clients as well when I'm life coaching, and it really truly works because sure does. you know you just you you see Tracy, it. Tracy, the other thing that I used to do too, and when before I started producing, yeah. I said I want to run this show. I would write it down in a wish book. Mm. Because if you try to carry around all this information in yeah. your brain, eventually you go into a brain freeze. Yeah. So you write down, have a wish book, clip out little pictures of what you want, a car, a boat, you yes. want to get married, you want to get divorced, whatever it is, you can do it. Yeah. Now, as far as religion goes, all of those tie right in, but some of the churches don't teach it that way. They True. want you to uh, offer something to them and be part of their church. You are the church. You are the kingdom of God. You have everything within you you need to make it. But you've got to push harder, and you've got to associate with people of like minds, spiritual people especially. Absolutely. Because that's all we come in here with. We're nothing but dust when we leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always say the phrase too. You got to give it away to keep it. I oh, mean, oh, perfect. You know, and it's so true because when I'm giving back and just being in that situation, you know, people always ask me, they're like, "What's it like down there? Is it gross?" Or and I go, "No, not at all." And oh. I mean, I don't look at it like that. I because I just I want to know about the people. I want to know why and and what happened and why they're there and and wh what we can do to change it and fix it and help people and how we can get them back to the place of loving themselves. Tracy, again. can they change it? You know, if the, if they have the will and, there it and is. they have the faith. Can they Absolutely. change it? Can a person that's out of shape yep. at 50 or 60 get in shape? You betcha. You betcha. There's yeah. your you answer. Betcha. See, Absolutely. so anybody the, listening to this, yep. yeah. I don't care if you belong to the mainstream gyms. We won't mention their names, but mainstream gyms is where all the money is today yeah that's where it is i call it the cattle call gyms yeah. you know because they have good trainers there some are mail ordered uh, certified but when you get in there get a good trainer and get moving and get motivated and never give up yeah. otherwise you'll disappoint yourself and those around you Absolutely. I love it. Mike, we've got a few more minutes. I want you to tell me what's going on for you. What's going to be well, coming up? What's coming up? Well, uh, us, there us. are shows and there are expos, Tracy, but there okay. is only one Steve Reeves expo, but it didn't work out. Here's okay. what happened. Okay, so Steve Reeves was the legend. We worked on a project to open the door to reinvent Steve. Steve passed away in 2000. In Valley Center, I was at his funeral. Joe Weider was there. Arnold was there. Lou Ferrigno was there. Since that time, uh, he has not done much as far as his memorabilia, his mm -hmm. uh, statues. By the way, he's got the first ever Sandow statue okay. in the collection. But I s was going to sign a contract to do the Steve Reeves classic shows. Mm -hmm. It didn't work out. I love it. It's yeah. a great idea. It wasn't for me. Goodbye. Yeah. But I got a, somebody else in the wings okay. that I can. I'm not at liberty to say because we haven't signed yet, but he's a three-time Mr. Olympia. Okay. Then he said, count me in if it's right. So okay. I'm leaving it at that. If it's right, when I come on next time, if you'll have me, Absolutely. I'll bring him with me. Please, <laughs> good. Bring his okay. wife, too. Him, yeah, bring his wife. Oh, you know who he is. Yeah, <laughs> we met. I think so. We met. Okay, Dad's so, like, I already know. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we try to always reinvent things because, okay. uh, yeah, you, uh, Hella can tell you. Now, there's so many classes in yeah. the shows. There's... Uh, What's the Bikini, the name of the show? Figure, Bikini, fitness, fitness. Physique, now you got old physique coming in play, <laughs> and yeah. it's uh, and then there's another organization that you're involved with, and the name again is IFBB. No, 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 not the IFBB. Fire, uh, wings of so. oh, wings of strength. Oh. Yeah, that's thank a you. Promoter. Okay, that's an offshoot, a subsidiary of folks of the IFBB. It's just not an entity. But I'll tell you what, right now I've been in Joe Weider's office a hundred times when he was alive. I knew Ben Weider on a first name basis. I could call him and his secretary put me through. Uh, it's the biggest federation in the world. IFBB is not going away. NPC is getting bigger. Mm -hmm. If you want to do something good, join the NPC, join the IFBB. Believe you me, I went outside of that before and I learned a good lesson. I, did I produce shows? Was I successful? Of course I was. Yeah. 
but uh, you know, they're still the main gun in town. And for now, guess where Arnold is? Mm. He's with them. With them. Yeah. 100%. So let's go by the track record. It almost sound like Donald Trump here, but you got to go by what's working, not by what you want. Absolutely. What you want and what's really there is a whole different ball game. Yeah, and that's where my decision came on board too. Um, you know, I've had a lot of uh, mentors in the industry, and I want to give a shout out to my opposing coach, Oksana Grishina. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Also, Stan McQuay for your help in the gym. And uh, I'm going to be competing in the Excalibur NPC show December 12th. Wow. So I hope you guys are Good coming luck. out to cheer me on. Thank you. I'll be in uh, figure D class. So I'm excited. Excellent. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, 17 more days. And so awesome. before we finish here, I want to know what you are up yeah, to. Yeah, what are you doing? And what's, ha yeah. what's happening? So what are you going to be doing? Well, I was second at the Rising Phoenix Wall Yay, Championships. Congratulations, All right. Just in, uh, in August. So um, <clears throat> since I was second, I'm automatically qualified for next year. Okay, good. Top five are automatic automatically qualified. So I'm not going to waste any time of like doing some uh, smaller shows or qualifiers mm -hmm. because um, the only critique I got from the judges was uh, I got to bring my back up because I'm okay. very strong on my legs. So yeah. they said, you got to bring a, a, a better back. Okay. So that's my quest right now. Mm. So Good. it's like back two or three times a week. And I'm like, nice. I bet you Steve Weinberger, I'm going to bring a bigger, bigger, bigger and better back. She <laughs> is. It's a promise. I know, <laughs> I know this girl is. So, yeah. you know, I'm of course um, going for, you know, doing the, the world championships again in August and just okay. bringing my best package that yeah. I possibly can. Mm. I'm yeah. wor working very hard every day. Um, yes, yeah, so clearly you look incredible. <laughs> Thank you. I, I mean, I have it. so much respect for you. Yeah, for sure. I, I know what it takes just to get this little body. So, <laughs> I mean, just I have mad respect for you. Uh, one it last is. words of wisdom for me before I get on stage. One thing that I can take to the stage and remember that a champion like yourself gave to me for advice before I hit the my first show in the United States look like a winner when you walk in there <laughs> you gotta you. convince yeah. the judges yeah. with the way <laughs> you carry yourself the yeah. way you walk the look you have in your eyes that you got this i got one for nice. you your, your, your nickname is quadricep queen give her a nickname <laughs> <laughs> um, quadricep queen, this must her. be miscut because you're like <laughs> very great <laughs> You have very uh, great conditioning. I mean, I see you. the veins coming out and the cuts in your shoulders. You. you look amazing. I love it. And Thank you. You still have 70 more days to, yeah. you know, improve. So that's amazing. Thank yeah. you. I'm going to so. remember those words when I'm walking out of the onto the stage. Mm. I just want to thank you guys so much for coming here tonight, Mike Glass. It's pleasure. such an honor oh. to have you here. I know My you'll pleasure. be back if you will, please. I'm Absolutely. already Absolutely. Okay, Whatever good. You need. Good. Thank and Hella, thank you so much and congratulations on all your successes. And also Thank yours you. as well, Mike. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much, you Dan Kennedy much. in the driver's seat tonight, working the uh, keyboards. Yeah, where are the and collars? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Next and time. Collars. And if anybody wants to check me out, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Hella Trevino. Beautiful. Also, thank you to my sponsor, Heyday Footwear. They always there and support me. Check out their page. Awesome. Yeah. TLC Athletics, Twitter and Instagram, Tracy Lynn Cowan on Facebook, Tracy Lynn Health and Fitness Life Coach, and also Life Angels, LA Talk Radio. Here every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you to all my sponsors, No Limit Muscle, Vina, Vitargo, Setwear Fitness. And uh, Mike, you can find you on Facebook under Mike Glass. Bring a friend, bring a buddy, bring your husband, bring your wife, but don't miss it on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Next yeah. week, Mike O'Hearn, you guys, <laughs> stay tuned. I know you won't want to miss that. Thanks again, you guys. Until Thank next you. time, Thank good night, you Angels. Thank you, Trace. Thank you. You're listening to Life Angels with Tracy Lynn, right here on LA Talk Radio.